Got to be Westlanders, welcome back to the Lost Color Tapes, where we delve into the depths of the historical lore of the Fallout world. Today we will continue exploring the history of the Cajon Pass region between the years of 2242 and 2255. We will also significantly expand our knowledge of the wastelands of California, Nevada and Sonora through the additional exposition introduced by the fan-made story mod Fallout New California. Of course, I recommend starting with the previous episode if you haven't seen it. And if you are new to the channel, you are a lucky person because you can enjoy the entire series with fresh eyes. As always, I remind you that a good idea is to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, hit the like button and leave comments. Viewer activity is the fuel for our train. Well, formalities are over, let's get back to the map. In the year 2233, the Wasteland Scouts undertake expedition number 196. A new member, Dr. Miyaki Kyoto, joins the team. During the expedition, the scouts spent three weeks mapping the San Bernardino region. The year 2233 is speculative, as the expedition occurred exactly 10 years before expedition 216, so I think it would be optimal to assume that future expeditions took place every six months. Before 2246, under the control of the Bishop family, Nerino joins the NCR and Tibis prison is constructed near the city. This is a reinterpretation of a piece of Van Buren lore, but apparently the prison is named after Vice President Joanna Tibbets. It's hardly a mere coincidence. Just imagine being such a significant and successful politician that they don't just name a street after you or erect a statue, but instead they dub a prison with your name. It's very charming. Atul Iripani, a caravan god from Tucson, participates in transportation of a golden statue of some Madra to the boneyard. Of course, this wasn't an offering to the local church, but a desire to melt the statue down into gold. Along the way, the caravan stopped and interacted with the locals. However, they weren't ordinary farmers. They poisoned Atul and the caravan had to leave him, considering him a dead man. But he survived and, seeing no other options, staggering and possibly sprinkling the sand with his vomit, followed the caravan. When he managed to catch up with it, there was no joy on his face. The caravan has been ransacked by the black vultures near Yuma. Weakened Atal fell into a puddle where the mother was laying. So it was the black vultures who poisoned Atal and possibly everyone else during the stop. They later returned to search the caravan and found seemingly resurrected Atal drinking water from the puddle, kneeling before the golden statue of some deity. Enchanted by the biblical motive they saw, they called clueless Atal a prophet and kneeled before him. In order to survive, he had to embody the role, improvising the religion on the go and developing it within a black vulture's tribe. Over a century and a half after its formation, the black vultures acquired a cultural mix characterized by biker style, Hinduism, Islam and Native American culture. Under the influence of their prophet's stories, the black vultures left Sonora and headed to Shady Sands. The reason was the caravan they looted belonged to a trader named Aradesh, who is the namesake of the Aradesh from California. The Black Vultures thought that Aradish was the name of a sacred place where the golden statue needed to be delivered, or perhaps Adel deliberately distorted the story to provoke the Vultures into a campaign, hoping that the tribe would be wiped out by the NCR and he could be rescued. Whatever the case, all the Black Vultures were captured by the NCR army and sent to Tibet's prison. Everyone in NCR were deaf to Adel's claims that he is not a raider, if that was the case. In 2246, following Colonel Autumn's orders, the Enclave attacked the Shi Empire from Novara base as a retaliation for their involvement in Poseidon destruction. At least they believed that the ship played a significant role in it. As understood from Fallout New California, the Enclave had several backup bases, including Bunker Bragg in Idaho, so they still represented a highly organized structure, not just a group of military refugees at Navarro, whose main goal was merely survival. San Francisco suffered heavily but withstood the siege until the arrival of an ally, the NCR, for whom the Enclave also posed a threat. Successfully repelling the siege, the NCR then stormed Navarro and conquered it, including the NCR and Clay of War. During the siege, the Vault Vikings from the frontier region arrived. The tribe raised in Vault 37 with a Nordic Romanized culture. We'll discuss them in more detail in the episode about the frontier. They just wanted to warm up in Southern California, but found themselves between two warring armies, each essentially giving them an ultimatum, forcing them to take sides and tip the balance. The Vikings sent everyone to Helheim and refused to help anyone. Nevertheless, the NCR still emerged victorious and managed to break the Enclave's defense. John Brack was captured and sent to prison, presumably Tibbets. The Leonidas squad, led by Colonel Davis and Chevy Brack, evacuated to Cajon Pass. Cajon Pass Leonidas landed in Athens and negotiated with the Raider Alliance to settle with them, using their base for parking with their vertebrates in exchange for technology and weapons. Generally speaking, the Enclave had long since formed an alliance with the Raiders. They supplied them with uranium. The remaining survivors in Navarro scattered in the wasteland and, as refugees, tried to settle somewhere, hiding their past, including in the NCR and the Mojave. The NCR searched for and exposed former Enclave members to bring them to justice, 
which is almost always ended in execution. Navarro became the NCR's military base and they gained access to enclave technologies, including vertebrates. As for the Vikings, the NCR was not generous to them. They arrested and sent them to Tibets. According to Fallout 3, at some point after the destruction of the Poseidon station, the Zack supercomputer located at Raven Rock in the capital wasteland sends a signal for the relocation of active enclave cells to the east to rebuild the faction. In the lore, there is no specific year for the evacuation, but I am convinced that it could not have been 2242 as Colonel Autumn, who became the de facto leader of the Enclave in the East, was at Navarro until its fall in 2246. Moreover, if the evacuation had started immediately after the fall of the Poseidon Station, then why would they still hold the base and even attempt desperate advances? Additional uncertainty is produced by the fact that, according to Vlad New Vegas, an active cell exists in the Chicago around 50s to 70s. It seems that the evacuation of Enclave cells could have occurred not all at once, but over some time, and the Enclave members could have done so voluntarily. Fallout New California suggests considering the year of evacuation as 2260, and it was supposed to occur in parallel to the events of the mode. This is also not a very accurate option, since the Enclave should have appeared in the capital wasteland before the Brotherhood of Steel. I propose the compromise concept. The evacuation of the Enclave to the east began in or slightly after the year of 2246, and did not cease until at least 2260, as it was around the time that the Leonidas Squadron planned to join the growing Eastern faction after completing its mission in the Cajun Pass. I also suggest evacuating Bunker Bragg to the east, since it doesn't appear anywhere else in the narrative, and it would be desirable to provide some reasonably coherent conclusion for it. After the explosive growth of the NCR due to the expansion into Northwest California, the state began to experience a financial burden. Sustaining and developing regions required money and resources, as well as people for imperialistic wars and an incredible amount of food for the population. The atmosphere in society is daunting. Constant wars and bearable taxes, confiscation of lands or farms, corrupt government and police, lobbyists in the parliament, stratification and so on. The NCR annexes new territories and either assimilates the tribes living there, destroying their culture, or drives them away. Some groups of raiders and tribes cannot compete with the NCR and are forced to leave the or unite in alliances, such as the survivalists in Cajon Pass. By this time, Juan Maxo Eldragon inherited power in the Raider Alliance after his mother and continued inviting all NCR persecuted tribes, raiders, and other outcasts. Jonathan Noss, the field commander of the Psychonauts, becomes Eldragon's lieutenant and actively helps him develop the faction. The Vipers were very unlucky to live between Shady Sands and Junktown. The NCR attacked their settlement, the Shrine, where they found the enormous mutant snake worshipped by the tribe. The NCR pulled it out of the sacred pit, killed it, and skinned it in front of the entire tribe. The snake skeleton was later displayed in the museum. Some vipers managed to evacuate and they joined the raiders. It is also known that the slavers guild left the den and joined the alliance. However, since they were not a culturally generalized tribe, just a gang, they dispersed and merged with the old guard. It can be inferred that the NCR did eventually annex the den after 2246, most likely ridding the city of Flaro's gang, or perhaps she left the city with her boss and also joined the alliance. At the age of 103 years, Dandy, the president of NCR, dies. Vice President Joanna Tibbets becomes the new president. Presumably around 2248, the Wasteland Scouts conducted an unsuccessful expedition number 208 or 209 to Boulder in Colorado, during which a part of the team perished. In 2249, the Wasteland Scouts undertake expedition number 210 to the Boneyard. Dr. Kyoto leaves a companion there who caused problems on previous expeditions and was involved in the death of comrades in the Boulder. On April 9th of 2250, a delegation from the NCR came to Pinehaven outpost and, under the pretext of collecting taxes, took the food from Wasteland Scouts. Now I'll ask you to be very attentive. After the Enclave's attack on San Francisco, the Brotherhood of Steel assaults the city. Presumably the Brotherhood wanted the Xi's technology, as they were technocrats and invented a lot of stuff. The Xi, not being the most advanced in military matters, had to ask the NCR to help again. Now here is where it gets tricky with logic and dates. According to Fallout New California, the Brotherhood attacked San Francisco in 2250, and this eventually escalated into a war between the Brotherhood and the NCR, corresponding to San Francisco joining the NCR in 2250 as part of a somewhat protectorate agreement. However, Fallout Frontier claims that the Brotherhood NCR war began in mid-2252, so the battle for San Francisco was not the trigger for the war. The explanation might be that the NCR did not directly participate in defending San Francisco, but supported the Xi with supplies, trade sanctions and stuff. In return, the Xi Empire was supposed to be assimilated by the NCR. After the annexation, the city was renamed Xi Town. I infer that the renaming to Xi Town happened under the NCR, not the Empire, as the 
proud chief faction would not derogatorily call themselves a town. This is San Francisco, it's a massive city, and now it's a... Pff, some shit town. Of course, the Shi were broken, but some were ready to fight for their independence. One such group was the Nanjima clan. They launched guerrilla attacks on the NCR around Shi town and caused an incident, as a result of which town lost another part of the city, taken over by overgrown vines. The NCR didn't like this, so they killed the clan leader. His daughter Kevin Nanjima, with a group of loyal comrades, had to flee from San Francisco. Eventually, they were caught and sent to Tibet. After San Francisco joined the NCR, the Nova Star Mercenary Company was founded in the city. It is known that at some point before the events of 2260, Els Dragon attacked Tibet's prison and freed the raider groups, offering them to join the raider alliance. It is also known that in 2250, John Bragg escaped from the NCR prison. Combining these two events, it appears that Bragg managed to escape due to Els Dragon's attack. This creates a parallel with the Van Buren plot. The Black Vultures and the Njima clan and the Vikings, upon escaping from prison, joined the Raider Alliance in Athens. Before 2251, an epidemic of the mind virus begins in the Cajon Pass region. It is a special strain of EVV, a barrel of which super mutants apparently forgot somewhere in the mountains in San Bernardino, and eventually it started to leak into the water. The infected became so insane that they cut off parts of their bodies, committed rape, murder, dismemberment, and cannibalism with maximum gore. If you've read the Crusaders comics, you probably have an idea of what it looks like. The Uxaka tribe was located near the river and thus was exposed to the infection. The Brotherhood of Steel wasn't on good terms with the Wasteland Scouts, but the Scouts had a friendly relationship with the Brotherhood's airship commander, Dean Rogers, who had once saved the Scouts during an expedition in Arizona. In the summer of 2251, a rather unpleasant situation unfolded. The scouts handed over their non-functional Pip-Boy to Dean, who fixed it, connected it to the airship and used it as a navigation tool. Unhappy with the loss of the vault's property and probably fearing that Brotherhood will be able to track the location of the vault, the Overseer of Vault 18 compelled the scouts to embark on a new expedition number 212 to retrieve this peep boy. The result of this campaign was the destruction of another part of San Francisco after Dean's uncontrollable ship crashed into the city's nuclear power plant. Over 500 residents of the city died, a rare ally was lost, all for a broken peep boy and a laser pistol that the scouts brought home. Now a very interesting slate of hand will happen. As I mentioned earlier, Fallout Frontier, through a chain of logical inferences, suggests that the Brotherhood of Steel and the NCR War started in the summer of 2252. However, there is no clarification on what exactly triggered it. What if the Brotherhood's airship failing on San Francisco, which by this point is already part of the NCR, was the trigger for declaring the war? What if the NCR interpreted this incident as a treacherous attack by the Brotherhood and an attempt to seek revenge? I mean, just think about it, it is genius and this puzzle piece perfectly fits into the historical flow. The only thing is, let's change the year from 2252 to 2251 as 2252 would disrupt the logic of some other events. In any case, there were preconditions for the war before this, two major factions simply found themselves too cramped on the same territory. The NCR is already pushing raiders away from its territory, and with expansion it gains samples of technologies that the Brotherhood also has its eyes on. The primary war region will be the Maxon state. What worsened the relations between the factions was that the Wasteland Scouts began raiding Brotherhood scout squads searching for Vault 18 in the Cajon Pass. During these attacks, the scouts pretended that the NCR was responsible. Generally speaking, failing to diplomatically delineate their spheres of interest, the factions unleashed a full-scale war. The confrontation remained in balance of power for many years, but eventually the Brotherhood's technological superiority began to yield to the NCR's numerical advantage. The NCR simply overwhelmed the Brotherhood with cannon fodder. Nevertheless, with the start of the war, the Brotherhood obviously abandons its outposts in Dan and Shady Sands. Fallout in California just can't stop giving me opportunities for criticism. The lore includes Scout Report number 202, dated 2241, where the start of the war between the NCR and the Brotherhood is mentioned, which in that case should have started during Fallout 2 gameplay, which is nonsense. I once again advocate for the notion that lore should be adaptable and adjusted in the process of analysis or in our case, retelling. Scout report number 213, mistakenly labeled as 214, because… because it is Fallout in California. Anyway, Super Mutants left a package with biomass in front of Vault 18's gear door, which due to carelessness was simply taken to the lab and left there. At night, a creature crawled out of the box and started a rampage, taking off James' arm, who was probably an intern there. The creature had to be burnt with a flamethrower, along with the part of the lab. I don't get what was the Super Mutants' intention here at all. September, Vault 18's water chip supposedly breaks, though it was actually an enclave sabotage. The scouts embark on expedition number 214, during which they visit Union City. 
There they make contact with the Brotherhood Defector, the local techno wizard. On September 9th, he gives them a lead on a some guy named John Bragg, who at the time was excavating Vault 52 with his sister, Chevy Bragg. Luckily, he has a water chip, which might have been retrieved from that vault. The assistance of the Braggs to the vault and their skills were highly appreciated, and they were invited to settle in the Vault 18. Over the time, and with John's Braggs growing popularity, he becomes a sports coach for children, and Chevy Bragg becomes a lieutenant in the security service after orchestrating the death of the previous security chief. The issue was that after the exodus from Vault 18, the remaining inhabitants faced the problem of being unable to reproduce a new generation. I don't know why suddenly raising a new generation and even passing a biomaterial became such a big problem for the vault dwellers after the exodites left, but a significant portion of the youth were brought in from destroyed tribes. Vault 18 entrusted the upbringing of children to Bragg, fearing the rebellious sentiments among tribal children and teenagers. Bragg instilled discipline through sports games. Since Bragg was an Enclave member and the infiltration of Vault 18 was part of their plan for taking it over, he begins raising children and teenagers as Enclave followers, masking it all as sports activity. Ironically, Vault 18 appeared a youth rebellion, but unknowingly allowed Bragg to secretly cultivate future rebels for years. There is a speculation that after 2251, the NCR finds Mariposa and destroys it or integrates Melchior and the entrenched supermutants. Firstly, this aligns with their policy of clearing and securing their territory. And secondly, around this time, the NCR assimilated San Francisco. So Mariposa would be on the edge of their new border, west of the Sierra Nevada. Moreover, on the promo map of Palatine, California, Mariposa is shown as a destroyed location. Before 2252, in California, the Botnicks emerge, who were former Soviet roboticists that somehow reached the shores of Northern California. They used their skills in handling robots for raids. They became widely known after successfully raiding the ship bank in San Francisco. One time, the Botnicks also engaged in fight with Wasteland Scouts and managed to beat them. 2252, Union City is infected with the Mind Virus, and the Wasteland Scouts undertake Expedition Number 215, during which Rossman blows up the Alliance Raiders' mind once again. Apparently, blowing up the Alliance Botnicks was his favorite hobby. In truth, the Old Guard didn't like the idea of the Alliance at all, because at its core they were xenophobes, but Elzergon subdued them with fear. Firstly, he held the families of the guard hostage in the settlement of Black Horse Range, and secondly, they faced the prospect of being sent to the road bandits, or even worse, to the mines, becoming voiceless for the rest of their lives. Actually, Black Horse Range was considered an elite settlement compared to the mines and caves. From this, it can be inferred that there was a class division within the faction. Despite blaming the Brotherhood of Steel for the tragedy in San Francisco, the NCR paid attention to the scouts. Though there was a formal alliance between them, the scouts' activities began to threaten NCR's security. Therefore, they hired the Novastar company to find the location of Vault 18. Novastar set up camp somewhere in the region. Expedition number 216, Paul. As part of aiding the California tribe, the scouts returned to Vault 52 and attempt to fix its water purification system to reduce the risk of infection for Ziabala. While Rossman was banging pipes with his wrench, Novastar made a successful attempt to kidnap some of the scouts. Using a mesmerizer, they extracted the location of Vault 18 from them and their camp. At the same time, one of the mercenaries infected Dr. Kyoto. Already aware of what the virus is and understanding that death is inevitable, Dr. Kyoto isolates herself in the caves and spends days repairing the satellite control device she had found earlier. It turns out to be an Archimedes 2 space station, which is present in the lore of both Flood New Vegas and Flood Frontier. She fixes this transmitter and directs lasers at the Nova Star camp, waiting for Rossman to rescue the captives. Dr. Kyoto destroys the camp and then takes her own life. For this so-called act of aggression against NCR citizens, the state declares Vault 18 its enemies and issued a warrant for the scouts' arrests. Ken Rossman is appointed the main perpetrator in NCR propaganda, and according to the issued resolution, Vault 18 is annexed in absentia. In essence, the NCR provoked Vault 18 into self-defense to provide a pretext for continuing their expansion. Before 2253, NCR colonizers reach Bullhead City on the east bank of the Colorado River and establish a remote colony there. The Raider Alliance is reinforced with groups joining the Botnicks, Necronation, Parker Grenadiers and Jackals, who were still present in California. Also somehow surviving Cans who had fled to the Cajon Pass joined the Raiders. Turns out that the Vault Dweller did not entirely wipe them out in 2161. They fragmented into small groups and, due to the nomadic nature of their lives, apparently managed to avoid unnecessary attention and remained unnoticed for a long time. Driven by the expansion of the NCR, they eventually united into a single formation, now calling themselves the Grey Hans. 
Around March 9th of 2253, an expedition of NCR anthropology students disappears. They were studying the Exodai tribes and the groups of the Raider Alliance. Unfortunately, they were captured by raiders and handed over to Psychonauts, who infected them with Botfly X. A month later, the Botfly larva tearing through the hosts burst out and the Psychonauts collected them and fed them to the spiders. Some students attempted to escape, but it seems that this endeavor was not successful. On April 14th, raiders handed over the mutilated Professor Allison V to the super mutants, who immersed her in a primordial soup, turning her into one of them. From Allison's notes, uh, which were clearly written for earlier concepts and were not corrected later, raiders resisted integration with the NCR for over 100 years, even though the NCR has only existed for 80 years. They also raided the Boneyards hub and Arizona through the Dune Sea. This suggests that the Alliance was supposed to represent a much larger army than what was presented in the game. For the final version of the mod, the developers apparently reduced them to a conglomerate of local scale. There is also a moment that the creators of Fallout New California, as always, neglected to check dates and we have an expedition of anthropologists who were captured after the destruction of Exodus tribes in 2243, and at the same time the expedition took place after the attack on Tibet's prison after 2250. In April, the Battle for Union City took place, less than three weeks, between the NCR army led by Colonel Silverman and Elzergon's raiders. Raiders attempted to siege the settlement, but strong fortifications prevented them from easily taking the city. Elzergon then devised a plan to set fire to the fields of cultivated ethanol corn that the NCR supplied to the territory as fuel. As a result of the explosion of secretly placed charges and the subsequent fire, more than 400 NCR soldiers perished. After the Battle for Union City, the NCR realized that the raiders in the Cajon Pass were not just a group of misfits and could be easily driven out of the territory, as they had done before. This was an organized army consisting of various tribes hostile to the NCR, ready to fight to the death. Furthermore, the Raider Alliance had the advantage in both supply and numbers in the region, while the NCR struggled with delivering both food and equipment to Union City and ensuring an adequate number of soldiers. For years, they had been engaged in fierce battles with the Brotherhood of Steel, costing the lives of a considerable amount of soldiers in California. In addition to this, criminal and influential clans in New Reno and Hub secretly traded with Raider Alliance, supplying them with weapons and equipment, ensuring themselves an endless flow of money. NCR soldiers were dying from bullets shot from NCR weapons. Corrupt politicians found it advantageous to prolong the war with the Raider Alliance, so they hindered political resolutions on troop deployment to the Cajon Pass region. Thus, Union City entrenched itself as a border and quite fragile outpost of the NCR. Joan Tibbets had to admit defeat in battle and agreed to sign a humiliating peace treaty with the Raiders, acknowledging their dominance in the Cajon. NCR authorities tried not to publicize the fact that 400 soldiers died because of corn, and Colonel Silverman received the title of Brigadier General for victory. This battle was reflected in Scout Report No. 217, and the Overseer of Vault 18 decided to stop expeditions and declared a lockdown. Vault 18's paranoia played into the hands of Bragg, allowing him to increase the muster of the football team. The scout report also contained an interesting detail. Among raiders, Hans, Vipers and Jackals were noticed, which let us determine the timelines of their presence in the Alliance slightly more accurate. However, the abominable Jackals were quickly driven out of the Alliance, letting them, along with other exiles who were not sent to the bottom of the mines, to form disorganized gangs of road bandits. A similar fate awaited the Parker Grenadiers. The Greek Hans did not last long in the Alliance too. They continued to wander to the east and headed into Arizona. Being nomads, they were not interested in staying in Athens for long. Moreover, they were not readily accepted into the Alliance, because having distanced themselves, they lived in tents and had little interaction with others. Misfortune befell on Bullhead City as migrating Hans arrived. Four dozen NCR colonies became easy prey for the Mongols who settled in the city. Joan Tibbs decides not to take any action in response, partly because it would be difficult to reach there with a new expedition, and they had just lost a lot of soldiers in Union. However, such a weak reaction eventually caused Joan her presidential seat. She faces impeachment, and Wendell Patterson becomes the new president. 2254, the Brotherhood of Steel sends another expedition to the east, this time targeting Washington. The expedition is led by Owen Lyons. From the Mojave wasteland comes Ben Kurtz, the sole survivor among the Vault 24 dwellers. He settles in Ziable and consumes a drug fruit that completely wipes his memory of his past, opening the possibility of becoming a tribal. We will talk about Vault 24 when we will explore the Mojave wasteland. After 2255, consolidating its position in northern Arizona, the Legion continues its expansion southward, capturing more and more tribes and settlements, assimilating them or simply wiping them off the map. 
thus the Legion captures Phoenix. After the events of Loud Sonora, Phoenix remained an independent major settlement. With the capture of the city, a sad fate awaited the Atomist ghouls, who were not liked in the Legion. Judging by the promo map of Fallout New California, two more Legion settlements appear in the vicinity of Phoenix, Hellmouth and Hell's Asshole. Also with the capture of Phoenix, it can be considered that the Sonora Express Postal Company went out of business. It can also be considered that with the capture of Phoenix, the Legion advanced south along the river and wiped out the River Walker Stripe in Kila Band, as well as the Adam Harrison Stripe, who headed into the frontier wasteland. Not that this character played a particularly significant role, but his tribe becomes another notch in Caesar's spear. Tiberius Rancor, a 16-year-old boy from River Walker Stripe, was forced to execute his parents. He managed to escape, though, and disappear into the wasteland. Over the next few years, he will be doing odd jobs and eventually start his own farm, get married and have a son. Honestly, I didn't expect that upon re-examining the lore for the re-release of Fallout in California episodes, I would find so much additional lore that I would have to split the episodes into three. But I need to take care of you too and not turn the video into a one and a half hour drooling history lecture. Next time we will finish the analysis of Flight New California. The most exciting part is yet to come. Well, do not to miss the video, please subscribe, hit the like button and leave a comment. Well, that's all for today, and uh, don't let your path lead you to Tibet's prison, and then we will meet again in the wastelands wanderers at the end of the holiday.